a 13 horsepower dozer, tool, or just a toy? In 2008, American manufacturer Struck released one of the world's smallest tractors, the Magnatrack RS1000. Designed with a size similar to a riding lawnmower, the homeowner's favorite was discontinued in 2023. Built in Cedarburg, Wisconsin, the highly versatile Magnatrack RS1000 could be turned into a mini bulldozer, a backhoe, or a cute little snowplow thanks to a long list of attachments specifically designed for the machine. Early models used a Honda GX270 engine and were powered by a main drive chain and rear clutch belts, while later models used the Honda GX390 engine and were powered by a micro V belt with auto tensioner and rear clutch belts. Invented to help homeowners to save thousands on contractor bills, the Magnatrack RS1000 was selling in 2020 for $7,900, including a free dozer blade kit. So is that a tool or just a toy? Let me know what you think in the comments. There's a reason why they called this tractor the beast from the east. USSR manufacturer Kirovets released in 1962 what would then become a legendary machine in the farming industry, the K700, a four-wheel drive, heavy-duty tractor that took well over one decade to develop. Powered by a 200-horsepower eight-cylinder engine, the Kirovets K700 had a weight of 12.8 metric tons, making it one of the largest tractors produced in the Soviet Union when it was introduced to market. The machine was upgraded to the K700A version in 1975, this time powered by a 225-horsepower engine. The A also included larger tires for better traction and increased fuel tank capacity. The K700 served as a base for the popular K701 model, also known as the Belarus 7100 in America from 1978. Over 400,000 units of the machine and its variants were built. This is how Henry Ford stabbed Harry Ferguson in the back. In 1938, Irish engineer Harry Ferguson and American industrialist Henry Ford shook hands on a deal that let Ford use Ferguson's ingenious three-point hitch on their tractors, a fateful agreement that would spark a long and bitter legal battle. Not long after the Ford Ferguson 9N was released in 1939, the collaboration started to go downhill when Ford decided to stop paying royalties to Ferguson for the use of his three-point hitch. But things were about to get worse. In 1947, Ford released the 8N, still utilizing the three-point hitch system, but without Ferguson's involvement. In response to Ford's decision, Ferguson filed a lawsuit in 1948, accusing Ford of patent infringement. Four years later, in 1952, the court ruled in Ferguson's favor, awarding him $9.25 million, but also noted his patent had expired, which automatically allowed other manufacturers to use the three-point hitch royalty-free, including Ford. How long to charge the world's first electric backhoe? Oh, you're gonna laugh. In 2020, Case presented its Project Zeus, a fully electric 580 backhoe designed to fit the over-the-top, super annoying and incredibly costly zero emission narrative. Four years later, the backhoe is ready to enter full production. Engineered to match the performance of the 97 horsepower 580SN, the EV model was redesigned thanks to years of extensive customer feedback. Now, the million dollar question, how long can it work until it needs charged? Running on a 400 volt, 71 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery system, the Case 580 gets between four and eight hours of runtime per charge. It will need to sit for seven and a half hours to charge from zero to 100%. Now carrying the industry's first electric backhoe label, the Case 580 EV will soon be followed by two additional electric machines, the CX25 EV mini excavator and the CL36 EV compact wheel loader. Farmall 560 versus Farmall Super M, who wins the pull?
This is the story of the short-lived Custom Tractors. Custom Manufacturing Corporation was formed in Shelbyville, Indiana in 1944 by three members of the National Farm Machinery Cooperative. The first Custom Tractors were marketed through an agreement with the Diamond T Truck Company. In 1947, the Model B and C were launched, both powered by Chrysler six-cylinder engines rated at 52 horsepower. In 1948, the Model E and H tractors were released, also running with Chrysler power plants. Over the years, Custom built tractors under a variety of names, including the Lair Big Boy Tractor for Lair Equipment, the Rockall for Rock Oil Company, and the Regal Custom, which was sold by Regal Motors of Brampton, Ontario, Canada. In 1950, the Harry A. Lowther Company acquired Custom and began producing tractors for Montgomery Ward & Company. Lowther sold the business in 52, and shortly after, George Push bought the rights to the Custom name, only to sell the assets later that year. So do you see a tractor in this machine or just a motor cultivator? World War II was just over when Alice Chalmers released the G-Tractor in 1948, a machine engineered mainly for truck gardeners cultivating delicate crops. The piece of iron is unique in the annals of classic tractors. Powered by a four-cylinder Continental gasoline engine mounted behind the rear axle, the amazing Alice Chalmers G was designed to cultivate up to 1.5 miles per hour and could move at speeds up to seven miles per hour. With only 10 horsepower available, the 1,500-pound Alice Chalmers G was clearly limited to light tasks, even though brand new units came equipped with a 12-inch one-bottom plow which, back then, was far from being an obsolete tool. In 1955, production of the G, which sold for $970 at the time, was terminated after a total of 30,000 units were sold. So do you see a tractor in this machine or just a motor cultivator? Let me know. Backhoe loaders on rubber tracks, is it genius or just stupid? In 2020, JCB launched the 1CXT, a backhoe loader mounted on tracks. Smallest in JCB's lineup, the 1CXT was designed with a 60% smaller footprint than a full-size backhoe, and the concept inspired the competition. In 2022, Turkish manufacturer Hydromek released the 62T, a mini-crawler backhoe loader powered with a 65-horsepower Kubota engine and an operating weight rated at 5.3 metric tons. To acquire JCB's 1CXT, it will cost you $88,900, $10,000 less than Hydromex offering, available for $98,000 in North America. Some will say the price to pay for innovation. Clearly responding to an increasing demand, these tracked backhoe loaders can already be spotted on various projects in the US and Canada. So what's your opinion about these compact machines? Leave your feedback in the comments.